In this video, we're going to talk about how to clean up old Jenkins builds. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. If you're an administrator of a Jenkins instance, you may find over time that some of your users have been keeping around huge numbers of builds. And if you want a highly performing Jenkins controller, you probably want to minimize the number of builds that are being retained. You could count on your actual job authors to remember to get rid of their history. But in reality, we know a lot of times people just don't do that. So today we're going to go through the basics of deleting old jobs and also a way that was introduced in 2.222 that will make it even easier for you as an administrator of a Jenkins controller. So what we have here right now is a Jenkins controller. I'll go ahead and log in and we will take a look and see what we have. This is just a basic Jenkins controller. It's running 2.263.3. We have an agent connected. We're gonna start out by creating a test pipeline job. And it is a very simple variant of the hello world that is available here under try a sample pipeline. And you can see here it was pipeline agent any, we're just using agent label Linux. So you'll notice here in this pipeline that we do not have any options set, which can be used to set up a build discarder. And we also have not set any discard old builds. We're gonna click save and we're going to run this 10, 15 times. And what we'll see in the job history we actually ran at 12. We have it from build number one all the way through build number 12. Now, if you were to allow that to go on forever, you'd be using more disk. It could potentially impact startup times. There's a number of things that can happen if you're keeping the full history inside of a job. So let's go through and set up a way to do this if you're job authors are doing the right thing. Now, if we take a look at pipeline syntax and select under declarative directive generator. So let's select on options. And I'm in Firefox, so some things here are a little strange, but we want to get to build discarder. Then I'll say discard old builds. And I want to keep a maximum number of builds of 10. And I'm also going to go down to advanced and the maximum number of builds that have artifacts. I'm also going to set that to 10. Now you could also do it by days, but I'm just gonna do max number of builds. Your choice will be whatever you want to do. So if we say de generate declarative directive, then here is the option that we can use to add that back into our pipeline. So let's modify our existing pipeline script to include this option. I'll push that in just to make it clean. So now this is going to rotate and only keep the last 10. Let's see what happens. So we have one through 12. I'm going to click on configure one more time just to make sure that we have, there's our options, but notice we do not have the options set here. So I'm gonna run this once to get the option set. So that was just a one-time run. You'll notice we'll go from 12 to 13. And now if we take a look at the job history, we're still at one through 13 because on that first run, it's a chicken and egg problem. If you've watched any of the other videos, we've seen this variation happen before. But if we take a look at the configuration, we can see now that the discard old builds is set to 10 and also 10 for the artifacts. So let's run this again one more time. Now we have 14 through four. So this is just the last 10 jobs that are retained. 
Now, this is all great and well and good when your job authors do the right thing and they remember to put in a build discarder option. But what if your authors don't do that? What if you want to have a central way of managing the history for all of the jobs, not just pipeline, but any type of job that is on your controller? Well, in LTS 2.222.1, there was a new feature introduced. Let's go in and set the specific build discarder. So we'll go to Manage Jenkins, Configure System. We'll go down to Global Build Discarders. I'm going to say Add Specific Build Discarder. I'm going to set this to a maximum number of five. And I'm also going to set the max to five for artifacts. Let's click on Save. Now, when we save this and we go back over and take a look at test pipeline, what we're going to see is we still have 10 here. Let's go and modify our job and remove the discard. And let's run this job once. You'll notice we have build 23. Let's click on test pipeline again here to refresh that history. And now we're down to five. So we removed the option from the job and we are dependent upon the specific build discarder that we have set to five. But what if I want even less than five? I can go back and set that and we're going to do that in a moment, but I would have to wait for up to an hour for this to run again. What if I wanted to force a run of the discarder? Well, we can do that. So let's click on Dashboard, Manage Jenkins, Configure System. Let's go ahead and first get this reconfigured to three. Click Save. And then we have a small script console script to run. And this is documented in the pull request that added in this feature. We have an extension list lookup singleton for background global build discarder. And then we do a do run on that. So before we actually run this, let's go back over and take a look at test pipeline. We have five entries here. Let's go back to script console and let's run this once. And let's go back to test pipeline. And you can see now that we have cleaned this up and now there are only three job history items that are left behind. Let's say our job is at a point where we want to keep the next job. Now, this example I'm going to show you is contrived. You would have to figure out how do you want to do this in real life. And you can do this with different job types. Since I'm working with pipeline, this is pipeline specific. I'm going to configure this job and I want to keep the next job entry. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a new stage here. And in order to keep this through pipeline, I'm saying current build keep log equal to true. Now, since I'm operating on current build, I also have to include it in a script block. Again, this is a very contrived example. You would probably implement this differently. In fact, you would implement this differently, but I want you to see what will happen when you do have a kept job. So let's click on save and let's run this just once. So you can see right now we have 21, 22, and 23. When we click on build now just once, we now have 24. There's a lock here, keep this build forever. And if I click on test pipeline again, we have 24, 23, and 22. So we're still 
keeping our three most recent builds. Now, we are going to remove that keep log from our job. Because the next one we run and forward, we don't want to keep any of these other ones. We were just wanting to keep just that one. So let's click on save. And just so you can see what's happening here, I'm gonna run this once. We have 25, 24, 23. Let's click on this. So we have just three. Now let me run it two more times. So one and two. And you'll notice that our kept is still kept. And then we have three more that are being kept on top of the kept. If I run this one more time, what we should see is now we have 24 and then 26, 27, and 28. And that's a quick look at how to manage job history within a pipeline. Now you can do this with multi-branch, you can do it with freestyle, you can do it with every job type. How you do it is going to be dependent upon the job type that you're working with. If you are a Jenkins administrator and your controllers have runaway jobs from a history perspective, then you need to speak with your users first and say, hey, we really want to try to keep these numbers reasonable. You'll talk to them as like, look, we're gonna keep the last 10. If there are any builds that you need to keep, mark those as keep, but don't let them mark all of them keep because that's one way that the system could be gamed. So we don't want that. So you'll still be needing to look and see what's going on. But for the people that aren't keeping jobs and they're just running things, the specific build discarder can make your life much easier as a Jenkins administrator, but it can also be very, very bad for your users. So use it judiciously and understand how it can be used. Then also make sure that your users understand how it is being used. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs, or you can reach out directly to me on Twitter at Darren Pope. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.